What I'm going to do today is more of a procedure than a recipe, but I will write it up as a recipe for my website. This is along the line of Svota Frigo, which I'll put down there for you. It's an Italian term that I learned from a friend of mine who was from Italy, and it literally means refrigerator emptier. What inspired me to do this video was something I read about some Italian moms who were working in a family restaurant and they were talking about lasagna. And one of them said lasagna is the best way to hide leftovers. She puts her leftovers in her lasagna. And what I did recently was I did a recipe for duck with plum reduction sauce. And I have some of the sauce left over and I have some of the duck left over. So I thought, why not make duck meat ravioli? And here's the idea. I'm going to cook up just a few of these just so I can taste them for the video. But I'm going to freeze them. And then once they're all frozen, I'll package them up. And I'm going to put them in the freezer so that when guests arrive from out of town, I can say, would you like some dinner? How about some duck meat ravioli? And they'll go, oh, yeah, wow, duck meat ravioli. I've never had that before. <laughs> but basically what I'm going to be doing them doing is serving them my leftovers. But it, it, they don't have to know. So that's what I'm going to do in this procedure. I'm going to be using some leftover meat. And you can use chicken, turkey, whatever you have. Try tip It's left over from a barbecue or something. You don't want to eat it. It's getting old. Put it in pasta and serve it as a separate meal. I'm going to be doing this as duck meat ravioli. Here's my duck meat. I have here about six ounces, which is about 170 grams, but I don't know how much I'm going to need because I'm not working from a recipe here. I'm just working with leftovers. So I weighed this, and then after I'm done making my ravioli, I'll weigh whatever's remaining, and then I'll know how many ounces or grams to put into my recipe. And then here is my leftover reduction sauce. I would say there's a good four to six tablespoons of sauce there. I'm starting off with three ounces of the meat, which is about 85 grams, and I'm going to mince up pretty fine. You could do this in a food processor if you want. I'm just going to do it with a knife. I want to get this chopped up really well. Okay, I think I've got that pretty much as fine as I want it, so I can move this now to a bowl and think about seasoning. So now I'm thinking about seasoning my minced duck meat. The standby would be like oregano or rosemary, but I want to do something a little bit different. First of all, I know it's going to need some salt because my meat here is not salted at all. So a little pinch of salt there. I'm going to grate some nutmeg in there. I think a little bit of ground nutmeg grated nutmeg would taste good in this. Just give me something interesting as far as the flavor. Not a lot, just a little bit. And then here's my reduction sauce. This is going to give me the liquid to turn this into something. I'm going to put about half of this in there. This is a gum because it's cold from the refrigerator. It's a gel. But as I get my hands in there and mix that up, that'll melt. All right. Okay, so there's my duck meat. I even put this in the microwave oven for 10 seconds just to warm up that gelatin a little bit so that it would melt in. Let's see, my red handle tasting spoon. I want to taste this. wonderful flavor. I'm not going to do anything more to that. There's enough salt, there's enough nutmeg, but it tastes of duck meat. That's delicious. Looking at that, the amount of volume I've got there, I'm going to say that'll fill at least 10 ravioli. I might use the remainder of the duck meat if I, I'm pretty sure I'm going to need it. I have my pasta machine set up as far as what I'm using here because some people want to know what I'm using and where I get them. This is an Atlas 150. I'll put the name down there for you. Atlas 150. I've had this for decades. I bought it, I think, at a local cookware store. You can find them in places like Sur La Table. 
but you're probably going to get them at the best price on Amazon. I know Amazon.com sells them. This is my pasta dough. I made this a few hours ago on my website and on YouTube. I have a recipe and a video of making pasta from scratch. On my website, look in the basics section of the recipe archive. This is basically two eggs and slightly more than a half cup each of durum wheat semolina pasta flour, which I can buy at the local grocery store, and um, all-purpose flour, and of course a little bit of salt. So I'm going to run this through my pasta machine. This is my ravioli frame. I want to get this wide enough to fit my ravioli frame. To start off here, I'm going to just lightly flour this because it's a little bit sticky. And I'm going to divide this in half because that's too much dough to work with all at once. I'll wrap this in plastic and set it aside. But meanwhile, I'm going to flatten this out with the heel of my hand. And I'll keep my flour duster handy. This is a little duster I bought somewhere. You can find these things in cookware stores too, and I'm sure you can find that on Amazon. I think this is actually a powdered sugar duster for confections. But I always use it for flour. All right. Again, flour very lightly. I don't want to dry this out. And then I'm going to start running this through my pasta machine. Pasta machines have a dial on them. Each setting brings the, the rollers closer together so you can roll the pasta thinner and thinner. I'm going to go down to number five on this machine. I might go to number six. I'll see what it looks like when I get to number five. Now looking at the pasta, this isn't finished rolling yet, but I'm comparing this to my ravioli frame. It's not going to be wide enough. so. What I can do is bring in my edges, like so, my ends rather, and then start going back through my machine again. And that'll help make my dough wider. I've rolled this to number five, but I'm thinking because I'm going to be doubling up my pasta, I want to roll this to number six. Normally I would roll to number five on my machine when I'm making things like tagliatella or egg noodles or whatever. But I want to go to number six and I cut it in half because it's going to get too big, too unwieldy to handle as I, as I roll this. This is going to give me a nice big sheet of pasta. Okay. Make sure that's all laid out nicely. All right, I'm going to show you a little trick here. If you need to, get one of these. This is a um, pizza dough roller. I've seen it on Amazon. You can use this if you need to widen your dough out a little bit more. Get it the way you need it. I don't need to roll this out for this ravioli frame because it's plenty wide enough. But what I do want to do is flour this really well on one side. I'm going to trim it like so. And then I'm going to turn it over. Whoops. See it's sticking a little bit. And that's why I floured it. I'm going to turn this over onto my ravioli frame and that flour will help to protect that from sticking in my frame. My frame came with this dimple thing that will fit on there and press it. I don't really care about that. But I do want to do my other piece of pasta dough here. I've temporarily set my pasta machine aside. I'm going to take little pieces of my duck filling here and start pressing it carefully into my pasta dough. 
I say carefully because I don't want to push it through and tear the dough on the other side. Okay. So you can see what I'm doing here. Depending on how big your ravioli frame is, I've got one that makes larger ravioli. This makes more of a normal size ravioli. But depending upon how big your frame is, that'll determine how far your filling will go and whether you'll need more or less. Okay, I'm just about done here now with this. Set that aside. What I have here is an egg wash. This is the egg white and a little bit of salt and maybe a teaspoon of water. And rather than trying to spread all around between all of the pieces of ravioli filling, I'm just going to paint the top sheet. All the way around. So that's my top sheet all painted. I'm going to flip that on top. And then just start pressing this all the way around in between to get it to seal all the way around. And while I'm at it, trying to push out some of the air, I want to lightly flour this. And as you'll see, that'll just fall out because I floured this. Again, just pressing around. If you feel as though there's too much air in there, and a couple of these are kind of airy, then you can just use a sharp knife, make a little hole, and then press it again to seal it. That way you can squeeze out some of the air, like so. And then what I have is a fluted cutter. So I'm going to start cutting between my ravioli, cut off the edges. This dough can be recycled to make more ravioli. If you run out of filling, save these pieces of dough, cut them up, put them in the freezer, and you can use them to make pasta for soup. There it is. There's my ravioli. Here's my last tray of ravioli. This one's got a bit of a flaw in it. You can't see it very well, but when I was draping it over, I got a tuck of pasta, extra pasta dough along that edge. So these six are the ones I'm going to use for tasting. And then the others I'm going to continue to put in the freezer. I got a total of 18. No, this makes a dozen. A total of 36. If you can hear that noise, yes, that's a plane going overhead. I live near the airport. Okay, so this, the six that are closest to you, I'm going to boil those up and use them for the tasting. The rest of these will all go in the freezer. As far as pasta dough left over, I have this piece and this piece, plus the trim that I just took off. I'll cut these up and I'll have chicken noodle soup for dinner tonight. Now, the next thing I want to do is make some sauce to go on my ravioli. Meanwhile, I'm heating water to boiling. Because my ravioli is made with fresh pasta dough and it's very thin, it's going to cook in only about a minute. The filling inside is already cooked, so I don't need to worry about that. I just need to cook that dough. What I have here in a little saucepan is some of my, I think this is homemade marinara sauce, but this could be my home made, if you want, um, cheater sauce, which is half Prego and half Classico. I do both. This I took out of the freezer yesterday and I've been thawing it. What I want to do to change this a little bit, because I think a red sauce would be good on this, this ravioli, but I want it to be a little bit of a lighter, smoother sauce. I have here some heavy cream. 
and I'm going to mix some heavy cream in there and make kind of a creamy sauce. It'll be smoother, it'll be lighter, it'll have a nicer flavor to it. Where's my red handle tasting spoon? Here it is right here. That's not it. There's my red handle tasting spoon. I call this my red handle tasting spoon because once it's been in my mouth, it doesn't go back into the food until after it's been washed. And this was washed. That's good. More cream? No. I'm going to leave that as is. So that's my sauce now. I'm going to warm this up. And then I'm going to also cook up some quick vegetables to put on my plate. Okay. I cooked up just six of these ravioli. They're good size raviolis, so they'll make a nice helping of ravioli. And then I have my sauce here. Let me just position that a little bit nicer some sauce on top. You could put cheese on this if you wanted to, but I think it'll be fine the way it is. Just with some sauce on it, not much. I used butternut squash because I think that's a good flavor to go with duck. And I love mixed vegetables, so I'm having that on my plate as well. Last step is to see how good that tastes. All right, I put some butter on my vegetables for myself. But mostly I want to know what my ravioli tastes like. You can really taste that duck in it. That's got a nice flavor of duck. Just a hint of sweetness from the sauce, the reduction sauce that was in there, the plum wine reduction sauce, and of course the pasta is cooked perfectly. I love homemade pasta. Mm. That is so delicious. So excuse me, I'm gonna go enjoy my duck meat ravioli. For a printable PDF copy of this recipe with step-by-step -step photographs, visit my website mobilehomegourmet.com and look on the home page or in the recipe archive.